that's requested. I'm going to show you how I sew the face masks that I'm selling and have the free pattern for up on my website. Now this isn't exactly how I sew them because I use my serger to put them together because I'm doing like 60 a day, but if you're just doing one or two, sewing machine is great. Um, I currently have my machine set with an automatic lock stitch, um, a relatively long stitch length. It doesn't have to be super short. This is a four on a machine that goes from zero to five. Um, somewhere, I mean, most machines, a three and a half is good. Three and a half to four is fine. Anyway, um, you've got your pattern pieces cut. Um, I've got two fronts and two linings. Um, the front is right sides together. So I'm just going to sew this curved seam first. Pardon the noise. And I'm using about a quarter inch seam. Um, I like to kind of line up using my presser foot. If you have a foot that's specifically a quarter inch, that's not bad to use too. So my machine has a lot of bells and whistles. It's got an automatic uh, start stop, back and forth kind of thing, and an automatic thread cutter. Um, this is a Janome 6600. And I actually have two of them for when my sling sales were really good, uh, so that I'd have a machine and a backup. But so here's that center seam sewn. And you open it out and you see you've got that nice curve. Um, if you want to, you can go and press this. I honestly don't bother. Um, you can also top stitch this seam, but I don't do that either because um, I feel like if you're top stitching, you're just putting another roll of holes in that, which is the last thing that you want if it's something that you're going to try to filter um, partic particulates through. So there's the, the front. And we're going to do the same thing on the, on the uh, interior. Um, this is just a solid, so there's no clear front and back. Um, obviously, if you're using a print, you want to make sure that your right side's together again. And we're just going to sew this seam the same way. I really love the automatic thread cutter on this machine. <laughs> Saves me so much time. Okay. So with this inside piece, um, it's shorter than the outside so that you can have a filter pocket. So you want to finish these edges. You can just turn that under once and do a, a relatively um, a small overlap there. And then sew that down. Um, when I'm serging these, I just serge straight across and that finishes the seam. It's a little, like, it's a lot faster to, to serge it than it is to, uh, to sew it. Same thing on the other side, making sure that I'm still working on the wrong side here. Um, if you want to, you can clip this inside. Um, I don't do that with the serger because it provides an edge that lies relatively flat, um, but you'll see there are some kind of peaks forming in there. Um, I, I don't personally think it's a, a huge deal. I mean, it's going on your face and anyone getting close enough to see that is too close. So now we're ready to sew these two together. Um, I like to make sure that these seams are pressed opposite each other. Um, I don't bother ironing because I'm sewing, you know, 60 a day. If you want to iron that, you certainly can. Um, this goes very quickly on the serger. Uh, it's a little faster, a little slower on a sewing machine, but still not a big deal. So, of course, the other thing you get on a serger is I get this edge finished so that when I tuck that under, uh, you don't see it. Uh, it's not a huge deal, though, because you're going to be turning that anyway later on. And I guess I'll just start here. I start at the end on the serger, which is why this is messing me up a little bit. So we're just going to follow this curve. Again, that more or less quarter inch seam. None of this is super, super, super precise. Um, Mask sizing is not like super duper critical. I like a, a larger overall mask because it feels more secure to me to have more coverage. Um, and this shape, I know there are a lot of patterns out there. I tried the one from Craft Passion for the first ones that I made, but then when I actually wore it out the first time, I found that especially if I talked, it would kind of slide down my nose and I was just always fiddling with it, which is the last thing you're supposed to do with a mask. So um, this one has much more coverage on the bottom and it's got a more gradual curve on top where the other one is kind of pointed. Uh, I don't know if you saw what I did there. I do these things without even thinking about them. I apologize for that. Um, 
here, I just made sure that these are pressed the opposite direction again so that it's the same. You can see that if I were to actually press that, it's the same on both edges. So now we're going to turn this right sides out. It's a little tricky on the small masks, but this is a larger one. So. And then here I'll kind of make sure that I'm still, I mean, you'll be able to feel it. This one is pressed in this direction and this one's pressed in this direction so that uh, it's relatively flat there. So now, and here's another place you can iron if you feel like it. I really just finger press. So now I'm going to take this uh, outer layer, make sure that it's folded over. And you're not going to see that when it's finished, so it doesn't have to be super fancy. Now, as a nose wire, I have this copper wire that I've curled the ends on. I don't know if you can see that. I don't think the autofocus is on, but I've turned it on either end. You can use floral wire or um, I think people are not recommending uh, pipe cleaners because they're a little too hard. But, you know, even a, a paper clip, I think, would work if you unbent it and made sure that the ends were, were... You can take a pair of pliers and just turn it under. Anyway, because that's so small, um, I'm doing a relatively close top stitch here. Um, on my machine, I'm just lining it up with this part of my presser foot. Um, your machine may vary, but up to a quarter inch is probably fine. I think I'm probably doing like an an eighth of an inch or so. Honestly, I've never measured. I just line it up with the... Because I've done so many of them, I find that this width works with the, uh, the wire and the way that I've bent it. Um, here, I'm just trying to make sure that this is turned all the way out. There's kind of a roll that I do with my fingers whenever I'm turning something. I do go fairly slowly on this part, just so that I make sure that I'm consistent, so that I can get the wire in. And I don't really worry about a back stitch there, because this is going to be folded under anyway. And then on the bottom, I tend to go a little bit closer, just because I think it looks nicer. It really doesn't matter as long as it's kind of held in place. Because um, when you wash, if you don't do the top stitching, when you wash it, uh, this can get all discombobulated. So I'm kind of rolling here to make sure that the edges are all the way out. Um, if you're not as comfortable doing that as you sew, you can either press or you can use pins or clips. Just make sure that you take those out as you sew. But I do this so much. It's a little closer to the edge than I wanted it, but it'll be okay. I hope you can hear me over the machine. So now I'm going to do that back stitch one again, and I'm just going to fold this under, I guess, what is that, about, it's a little less than half an inch, and then this is about half an inch. There's enough built into the pattern that you've got between like a half an inch or um, and three quarters of an inch overlap. So then I'm just going to make sure that these ends are secure. Oh, I forgot to put my wire in. Okay, um, don't do this step yet. <laughs> I get the wire on the other side uh, because the when you put the wire in, it's actually going to be held in the mask by these. So I meant to do this first, and I'm talking and I forgot. I think I actually cut that a little too close there. As you sew, so I'll show you rip. So I'm just gonna feed this in, and it's going into this small channel. It can be a little tough getting it. Oh, that's fine. Sometimes it's a little tough getting it past that bump, but that was okay. All right, so I've got it in. The ends are where my fingers are. Just give it a little bend so that it stays in place. Um, that gives you a nice nose shape. And then I'm going to do this other side. Um, when you're washing these, I would just pull, pull the whole mask in half so that that wire doesn't migrate somewhere else. Um, and actually, if you have a lingerie bag or a mesh bag, that you might lose, use for delicates. I think it's a good idea to um, put one of these in there just so that it doesn't get tangled up with your laundry or whatnot. All right, so now I'm just clipping all the little threads that my machine leaves. But there's my finished mask. And uh, when you're wearing it, you can bend that in the middle and then out a little bit. And um, even if you wear glasses, it keeps it close enough to your face that they're not going to fog up. And like, you know, if you 
if you want a more finished sort of presentation, you can top stitch this. I was just not comfortable with having extra holes in there. Uh, so then once you're done, um, I think this design works best if you have a continuous tie that's going through this casing uh, rather than um, elastic that's sewn in because that kind of cinches it up when you wear it. This keeps this closer to your chin and this closer to your cheeks. Um, Steven, can you grab me that pink piece of ribbon from the ribbon thing? And there should be a metal thingy under those masks. Yep. So I have this bodkin that I use for pulling ribbon or elastic through. Um, you can also use a safety pin or something like that. But so I'm just kind of starting at the top. I'm going to thread through the top of the casing and then bring it up through the other side. It gives you a continuous tie. So this part goes around your neck and then this part ties. You can actually tie it you know, behind your neck again if you want to or higher on your head. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate because this one's actually going to someone else, but uh, I think you can see pictures of these being worn uh, if you look at the mask details on my site. So that was it. I don't know how long that took. Maybe 10 minutes with all the explanations. Um, hopefully that clarifies the instructions a little bit because I know that my, my PDF is, a, is pretty brief. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks very much.